Gracias. So, first actual speaker meeting. I don't know about you, I'm pretty pumped up. Um, I honestly couldn't think of a better firm to represent here on our first meeting than Nixon Hughes Goodman. And I couldn't ask for a better group of professionals than the ones we have here today. So, real quick introduction. Karen Krause, Jason Holt, Jamie McFadden, Nicole Parnell. Um, each of these members has extensive experience with Nixon Hughes Goodman. And are truly professional in what they do. Um, Karen specializes, uh, specializes primarily in not-for-profit. Uh, Mr. Holt is the manager of the Virginia Beach office for Dixon Hughes Goodman and specializes in tax. Jamie specializes in a test services, also known as audit, for those of me uh, that didn't know that. And uh, Ms. Parnell deals with retirement planning. So. I will keep this very short and get off of here so we can get to what we really all came here for, which is to hear these professionals talk to us. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dixon Hughes Goodman. probably didn't want to hear too much from me, um, being older in my career and a little bit further from um, where you all are sitting today. It, I thought it would be more um, important for you to actually have interaction with some folks that have made public accounting their career so far, we hope forever, and they've been with us long enough to really know what public accounting is about. And so the point of today is to let you know a little bit about Dixon Hughes Goodman, but also to let you know... Um, I'm not sure how you all are, but whenever I was sitting in your shoes, I knew I was going to go into public accounting, and I really didn't have an idea of what that would look like for me, like what my day would be like and what, what that meant. I just knew I knew some people that were accountants, and I thought they were pretty cool people, and they seemed to have a cool job, so I went into public accounting with probably zero knowledge of what, you know, what your options are and all those kind of things. So that's what today's about, is for you to talk to folks that have been with us for quite a few years. Um, work in different areas so that you see that public accounting isn't just about 
audit. It isn't just about tax, although those are very important. There's lots of other areas that you can work in. And hopefully you'll get from today that public accounting can be a really great career. I know some of you may be thinking public accounting for a few years and then go out to something else that um, is a little less stressful. Um, public accounting is probably just as stressful as any other accounting job you can have out there. And so I want to um, uh, give you some exposure to folks that um, can give you the real scoop versus uh, uh, the sales pitch that, that, um, that I would give, give you. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit. How many of you have had an internship within public accounting yet? One? Two? Um, so you'll, you'll hopefully, resonate, uh, some of what they talk about will resonate. For those of you that haven't had an internship, um, it's a great opportunity to get to know a firm, kind of see, see if you like their culture and, you know, all those kind of things. So I know that the career fair is coming up. Uh, when you come to dinner with us next week, you know, feel free to bring resumes and those kind of things because we'd love to talk to you about what an internship means and um, how we could work things to get you some exposure and experience and see if what everything we tell you today is actually true, which um, I would hope it would be. So Dixon Hughes Goodman, I just wanted to give you just a few brief things about um, uh, what, what kind of firm we are, what size we are, those kind of things, and then I'm going to turn it over to the folks here and let them really take it away. This is our size. I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but Dixon Hughes and Goodman merged about a year and a half ago, and um, we are over 1,700 people, lots of partners, um, 30 offices, many states. Just to show you where our footprint is, we're the biggest firm in the South that's located in the South when you take out the big four that are more national. Um, here's some of our rankings. So um, this is actually our global alliance that we're, at, we're with. Um, Praxity is the eighth largest in the world and it gives us resources even outside of our footprint. We can really do business in any country with our alliance. Here's some of the, the sales pitchy type things, but it's really true. With size comes with with size comes the ability to really do anything that our clients need. You get a phone call and someone says, "Hey, I need this service done. If we can't do it locally or in our office because we haven't dealt with it yet, there's a, it's easy to pick up the phone and get someone to call that's dealt with whatever that is before and really bring your client the best service possible." And um, Big four alternative, of course, just a little bit smaller in size, um, uh, brings its added benefits, and um, accessible, responsible, hands-on style. We're, we're still a local firm, really in touch with our clients and um, interacting with them daily. Probably the most important thing that you'll maybe hear a little bit of today, especially with Nicole speaks, is we have industries, and so you can focus in special, specialize in industries in addition to specializing in audit tax or something one of our other core services like retirement plan specialist, specialists. Um, these are our um, industries where we have significant depth, lots of people that know the industry and can help our clients with more than just get your tax return done or finish an audit. We can really advise and help them through issues that they would come across. This is just a really long chart. It talks about everything that we do. The only thing I want you to take away from today is when you think about public accounting, Think that there's lots of opportunities. You can just do it, no, let me not, not say just, because that might have been Jason. You can do tax returns all the time and get really great at that. Or you can work on audits and, and get really great at audits. You can also do a, a lot of other things that are on this chart that you wouldn't necessarily think of when you think about public accounting. So keep your, keep your options open. Get a few years, if you're going to go into public accounting, get a few years of experience and then see if there's another area you really want to specialize in that builds on that core couple years, but puts you in a niche that you really enjoy. That is it, and I'm going to turn it over to, I think we said, Jamie's going first. But 
on each different job you have, there's um, different clients, different types of work, and different people that you work with. And so it kind of keeps it interesting. Uh, you get to learn a lot about different types of companies. You learn how they make money and how they're affected by the economy. So it's kind of a new set of rules every time you switch clients every couple of weeks. Um, on a typical audit job, we spend a lot of time at clients' locations, and we call it being in the field. And your whole audit team will go out in the field. And there is um, typically audit staff, and those are people that have been there, I would say, under three years. And then there's an in charge on the job, and that can be with people that are there from three to five years. And then you have a manager and a partner. Um, and so that audit team will change pretty much on every job. Sometimes you work with similar people, but um, it fits. Some of the challenges, you are out in the field at a client location, and so you do get a lot of client interaction. Um, that can be a little bit tricky. A lot of times we are not the client's favorite people that they want to see. We kind of come in and invade their space for a week or two, um, and we disrupt their day, and we ask them to do a lot of extra work. So we are, in a sense, a thorn in their side while we're there. So it gets a little bit tricky um, trying to keep the client happy and also trying to do your job. So that will be one of the challenges you face as an auditor. Um, another challenge, I don't know if you all are big New Year's celebration people, is uh, there's a lot of inventory that goes on on December 31st, and we like to recruit staff to partake in the inventory. So I would suggest you all keep your New Year's plans flexible for the first few years. Uh, if you're lucky, you will get an indoor inventory, and um, there are some horror stories about inventories occurring outside, like we saw before, we have some car dealerships, and I've heard stories of it being snowing and you're outside counting cars. Uh, and also another one of the bad ones was a, I think it was a fishery or something I've heard, and people were inside a freezer dressed in parka coats counting frozen fish. So just keep your eyes and ears out, try to avoid those types of jobs. Uh, some of the perks are um, a lot of our jobs are recurring year over year, so you'll be thrown probably into a supervisory position pretty quickly. Um, once you have your second year on the job, you'll probably be asked to help out with um, people whose first year is on the job. So, uh, like I said, you'll get a lot of supervisory experience pretty quick. Um, another thing is uh, you get to see the ins and outs of a lot of different companies. Um, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but you may decide at some point that public accounting is not for you, um, and you will have been exposed to a lot of companies, um, and you can see their management styles, sometimes you even get to see what they pay their employees, it's kind of like getting an inside view without actually having to take the risk of working there. So, that's a little bit about audit. That's all I have. Again, my name is Jason Holt. Tax manager for the Virginia Beach office. And you know, taxes is a lot different from audit. We don't go out in the field, we get to sit in the office. <laughs> we talk to clients on the phone instead of face to face. Um, you know, but you know, taxes encompasses a wide range of things. My primarily I'm specialized in construction real estate and service. Service meaning everything else that doesn't have a specialty. Um, so generally, a typical day in the tax life is, you know, we might have a tax return to prepare. Generally, first or second year staff would prepare the tax return. Then it gets sent up to a manager or supervisor to review. Then it goes to a final review stage with the partner or senior manager, depending on the type of job. Um, so I'm in that review step. So my typical day consists of client interaction, talking with the client, talking with the IRS for the client, or assisting staff with preparing the return if they have a question, or we're actually physically reviewing the return or assisting the partner. And then my favorite part is tax planning. And that's where you really get to help your clients out. You know, there's generally two distinct types you have before the transaction and after client comes to you and says, I just bought this piece of land. You say, great, but I can't really help you too much now because you, the transaction's already happened, 
so we're limited in what we can do with, you know, within the tax code. But if they come to you and say, I'm thinking about buying this piece of land, it's even better. Because then you can say, well, what do you want to do with it? And then we can go from there. Um, a couple of challenges. You know, like I said, you're, you're, you're more isolated because you're in the office. You know, all the auditors are out in the field all day sitting on the tax people sitting in the office. Um, it's harder to get a read on your clients when you're not face-to-face -face in front of them. So you're generally more looking at their books and trying to determine, you know, what were they trying to do when they reported the transaction and, and how should it be recorded. So, you know, even, even though you think of tax, you're doing a tax return, the auditing side is still very important when you're dealing with partnerships, corporations where they have an actual balance sheet because generally we use a double entry set of books to complete the returns. Um, success stories, um, you know, tax planning, I have one engagement with, is an ongoing tax planning all year. Um, client has several businesses. We do quarterly projections. We are annualizing his income for tax through all the different companies he has, so it, that takes probably about a week every quarter to get all that done. That's a bunch of, you never know what happens from quarter to quarter. Um, like I said, you have plenty of clients that buy land, we might put in the LLC, depending on what they want to do with the land. Um, really, the tax planning is, is where I, I like to can help your clients the most in that part. When you're doing the clients, doing the return, it's kind of that's what it is. You don't have much leeway. And even within, you know, I'm specialized in tax, but I have many, many different things in tax that I can do. I can, like, I've recently taken on, I'm one of the regional go-to people in the firm for the new 263A temporary regulations. So I'm kind of digging into that, and that's kind of fun. It's right there with my construction real estate and the new temporary regs. Having fun with that, doing client information and stuff like that. So that's generally what I do all day long. And then, you know, as a staff, first or second year, you're basically, you know, you're learning how to do a return, learning to get the trial balance and journal entries made, and just kind of familiarizing yourself with the tax code, maybe doing a research, and then as you progress, maybe two or three years, depending on the size of the engagement, um, you might be put into even some more of a review site on areas of the return. Because I, you know, I have a few returns that are huge, so that kind of segments it out so you can delegate different parts to different people. And that's, that's generally what I do. Again, my name is Nicole Parnell, and I am with the Retirement Plan Services Department. Came to the firm about six and a half years ago, looking for something very different. I actually worked in nonprofit accounting for eight years, and was ready to specialize, find my little niche um, where I could really excel. And Retirement <coughs> Plan Services, I had not even thought about, um, but now I'm really happy that I made the switch. It's very interesting. Uh, definitely, every day you're on your toes. Never know what's going to come up. Um, basically, what, what we do, we are in the role of third-party administrator. So we do technical consulting, compliance review, an annual informational return for all employers who decide to sponsor a retirement plan for their employees. Um, we have to very, uh, know very in-depth information regarding IRS regulations, but also Department of Labor, Labor regulations. So we've got both sides of the, of the corner there. Um, a day for me right now as a manager, I work with other associates who are preparing the returns, reconciling the plan assets, reconciling transactions that happen either on a day-to-day -day basis for the plan or even annually when we actually calculate profit sharing contributions, matching contributions, things like that. And I do all of the, the review, very similar to what Jason was talking about. Uh, very complex calculations sometimes because we deal with non-discrimination testing, which is always fun, kind of almost like census review, making sure 